nervous. He's got it on lock though. They didn't get to put rehearse today. Aiden came like an hour and a half late. Hello and welcome to the horror show. Beware of your belongings and switch off your mobile phone. <laughs> Is irrelevant. The streets are paved with skulls. Your punishment is to death by a way of hanging. Its rivers are swamped in human blood. You will be hung by your neck until you are dead. For clouds in the skies, they are human ashes. As requested by a former colleague, a prayer will be said in your name. The sands on the beaches, they are human teeth. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The air is rank with the stench of a thousand rotten corpses. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The grass is formed, the trees drop daggers from their branches, and the, uh, the animals draw acid from their mouths and they bite. Their eyes are red, starved forever. I shall fear no evil. You should. The condemned man may have one last request. Destroy my lab with everything in it. And his last words. Your Honor, have you ever looked down into a crack in the pavement? Your words must be in the form of a statement, not a question. So that's a no then, pity. Because if you look just that little bit closer, under the soil, under the stones, beneath the coffins, beneath the bones, past the tubes that are a little newer, past the crypts in the Victorian sewer, next to the dinosaurs left out in the cold, next to the clay in the Romans' gold, on top of the granite all slate and gritty, you will find Satan City. And I am taking him with me. You will choose blasphemy as your last mortal words. <sighs> that wasn't me, madam. I beg of you, do not send me into a nightmare forever. May God have mercy upon your soul. I have no soul. Whoa! Ah! Tiffany would have a sleepover once a month. So 
she decided to call her friends and have their girls night in. But this time it's different. They done their hair and makeup. They got bored, so they decided to play another game. Do you know what game they played? Do you want to know what game they played? Limbs off of them. 
and I became a small child. I didn't like to play with the other kids in the neighborhood. Instead, I would inflict pain on small bugs and small animals, rip the wings and legs of insects, and suffocate puppies and cats. But when I became older, bugs and animals just didn't cut it for me. My passion for pain became a thirst for killing. But I wouldn't just kill anybody. No. I had a thing for children. I would roam the streets as they played out and call them over. At which point I would kill them. I worked in the town's boiler rooms where I would take my victims and dump the deceased. As time went on, I got bored of using knives and hammers. So I became up with a unique sort of weapon, which consisted of a glove with razor sharp razor blades at the end of each fingertip. I would scrape them along the pipes in the boiler and up and down my victims' faces. I loved the look of fear upon their faces. At which point I would kill them. As time went on and more and more children went missing, parents began to suspect it was me. They went to the police. Nothing happened. So they decided to hunt me down. Kill Penny! And chase me through the town. And into the boiler rooms where I worked. couldn't get to me. So they threw petrol bombs through the window and watched me burn alive. They thought that was the end of me. They thought wrong. But though I may have been dead in person, I was alive in spirit. And I took my revenge upon their children's dreams. Sleep. And if they was fortunate enough to wake up, they'd always be have, they'd always have scars upon their skin. But if they was unfortunate enough to die in their sleep, they'd never wake again. Wake up! No! 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 So that tune. No. It's <laughs> them getting dragged back to hell. There was a girl, Charlie, they used to call her. Little Charlie. You want to? Little Charlie they used to call her. But I remember that Charlie grew up to be dirty Charlie. Nasty Charlie. You want a shot of vodka, Charlie? You got a cigarette, Charlie? Charlie liked to party. She liked hardcore. So she went downtown to some of the hardest rings. But little did she know, this ring was harder than she thought. Just walks right up to her and rubs her hand right down her. 
She thinks it's not for coming, so she goes along. Then before she knows it, there's 10, 20, loads of them surrounding her, rubbing her, touching her. It feels like she's floating the high that she wanted. But those touches turn into scratches. And those rubs turn into bites. She screams. <laughs> she screams. She screams. The object of all disease, the object of desire, the reason for blood. She gets thirsty, but not thirsty. She gets thirsty for you. She doesn't care if she has to steal you like a thief in the night. She will take you, tease you, and then she'll eat you. <laughs> She's the reason. <laughs> She's the reason, the reason of all, <laughs> the reason of all evil. <laughs> ah! Get up, <laughs> Today, it is your umbilical cord. You have two hours to run on it. If you stop or slow down, the oxygen from this room will be sucked and your insides will dry up, leaving you with absolutely no air. And this room will become your tomb. No one knows the value of life until their face death. <laughs> Tonight you will be played like puppets. You're probably wondering where you are. I have placed you inside a coffin and tied your hands together. You will have to come out this box with your teeth. Nothing but your teeth. If you move your hands in any way, the two ring metals will detonate, exploding, leaving the box with your blood. You are used to seeing other people's blood rinse from their bodies. Well, tonight, your blood will splatter. Ah! Ah! Oh, please! Right in front of you, there's a box full of needles. You will have to find the correct key for freedom. You have 60 seconds in total. One, two, three, four, five. Your time is up. No! As you feel already, the sulfuric acid is melting your insides. Look at no!
like sugar and spice and all things nice. However, it isn't always the case. Oops! Pixie Mae was like a normal nanny or girl. She played games that nanny or girls do. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> she got an axe to kill her mother. But <laughs> at the time, I had to lock herself in the bathroom to protect herself. Children. <laughs> <laughs> 
in it. <laughs> then we wake up with scars all over the body. <laughs> and no one would believe it was fixing me. <laughs> no one. It was fixing me. There were these teenagers walking down a long fucking road. And half of them were drunk, and half of them were tipsy. They were laughing and joking around until they came across the cemetery. <laughs> now, one of these members remember hearing an urban legend about the same cemetery. The legend was that if you went in the gravestone, So we started to get annoyed and dead. But only one girl was brave enough. But she wasn't looking to do anything for free. So they were covered up and came with a plan. The plan was that each of them would give her 20 pounds. She agreed. So they would jump off the wall. is inside you already. I was once a good man. An honest man, a decent man. I only wanted to help. But life can have a way of surprising us. Call it what you like. An evil myth or a tale of a psychopath. I can assure you by the end of this, you will never be sure what any person's limits can stretch to. For this story speaks of a creature that exists in every single one of us. It's the cold, it's the temptation, it's the evil side of human nature. One man knew of this many moons ago. And his name was Dr. Harold Jekyll. Now here's a man who has seen the best and the worst in human nature. But he's forever haunted, forever haunted by two words. What if he could purge mankind of all impurities and in essence create the perfect human being? So, like trying to perfect this potion. The thought have it come a good doctor's mind. Start to hear voices. They always for one word into his ear. Just one. Right. He's here every second of his life. And so his last attempt, he swore for the sake of his sanity. This would be the last time he tried. So he put together the ingredients and took the potion. 
By this time, these figures have become real in his sight. And they dance around the way of the doctor. Was the devil mocking him? No. Was he crazy? No! It was a warning from God! And I was wrong! He drank that potion! And he said to the man, God's children, always the first to kill. What you don't understand? The age of hide is over, but you'll never escape your true nature. Then the man stood up and said, Feed that demon! Damn you! And hide fell to the floor, he shook violently. And then rose up and rejected. And he muttered, What Drink, 
Your best dreams can turn into nightmares. Have you ever laid down in bed with the lights off? You're getting ready to go to sleep. And then you see some sort of shadow next to your door. You start getting scared, so you're like... You start getting really scared. So you turn on the light, and all it was was your coat. But what about when you can hear voices calling you from down the stairs? Calling you, saying, come down the stairs. <laughs> you start really panicking. You start really getting scared. So you're like, Mom! Mom, did you call me? No, you're hearing things, babe! <laughs> <laughs> you see, there's some crazy people in this world. And I call them the quiet ones. The ones that never say a word unless they need to. You see, the quiet ones, they ain't reading books. They ain't watching TV. They're watching you. And they're waiting for you to fall, crumble. And that's when they'll pass. Think I'm lying, innit? You all think I'm lying. But you know what? When they're walking towards you and you can't do nothing, you wanna scream? Who's gonna hear you? Oh, so you wanna run? How are you gonna run when each and every toe has been broken? <laughs> <laughs> so you laugh. Oh, so you guys think this is a play. So you sit there and think this is a play. But let me yeah. tell you something. Each and every single one of you know that there's always, always. Someone walking behind you. <laughs>